Has it ever happened to you that you anticipated that something would go wrong, hence you proactively fixed it, but it still went wrong? This exact thing happened to GitHub on March 1st, 2021 on a situation for which they were prepared for six long months. This is a very amusing incident as it teaches us a lot about the blind spots that exist in every system out there. In this video, we talk about an outage that GitHub faced with their action service take an in-depth look into what happened, why it actually happened, what GitHub did to prepare for this very situation, but it still went wrong. So let's jump right into it. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort-based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focus group of 50-60 engineers every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning 9 cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack, to designing our own toy load balancer, to Greek buzzes live text commentary, to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course which you see on the left side and the second one is the recorded course which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. Thanks. So this is the incident report that we would dissect. What it says? is that our service monitors detected a high error rate on creating check suits for workflow runs which affected action service. This incident resulted in failures or delays of some queued jobs. That's okay. But now we'll drill down into what exactly happened, what this, these two statements mean. So just to give you some context. So what happens is whenever you push something onto a repository, let's say you create a pull request and then you add commits to it. For every pull request, or for every commit you add, there are some fixed set of checks that GitHub has to execute in order to ensure that it is okay to be merged. For example, it could be simple linting checks. It could be simple, it could be simple secret detection checks. You can even write your, or you can even add your own checks as part of a commit or as part of your pull request, right? This is what is being questioned over here. So the, the, let's say what happens is you have multiple repositories. They all talk to this action service to run these sort of actions and checks on the particular repo. So what happened? Before any action is run, a check suit is created. right? And this check suit contains a bunch of checks that needs to be executed. Once all of those checks are done, then you are okay to merge that particular repository. Uh, sorry, to merge that particular branch into the parent branch. Right. This is something that we all observe. Now here, one peculiar thing to observe is if it is something or if a workflow is something that is running on every commit that happens, this is a very high frequency event, which means that there is a chance that the ID might exhaust and this is exactly what happened. So whenever a check is created or whenever a check is to be executed, every execution of it is given a unique identifier. This identifier obviously is a row identifier in your relational database. So GitHub very heavily uses MySQL 
I am assuming for this data, uh, for this use case also they are using MySQL itself. So for every row, you have an ID. For every execution of this check, there is an ID in the database. So basically there is an entry in the table. Right? So now what happened? That given that these checks run upon every single commit that happens, there is a lot of entries that happen on the database or in the table, which would make the table explode. Right. So you are, when I say explode, it's not really going down, but it's more about having large number of entries in it. So what happens here is your ID is of type integer, which is an auto incrementing ID. And integer by default, when you create a MySQL table, the size is 32 bits. So when what happens is because it is a 32 bit integer, it has a limit, let's say 2 billion, uh, it's a signed integer and the uh, limit is 2 billion. If it is unsigned, it would be 4 billion. But the idea is that because it is a, uh, because it is an integer or a 32 bit integer, it has a relatively smaller range. 2 billion is still not a small number, but relatively smaller. And for a use case, which is this frequent, where you are running checks on every single commit uh, and every single execution is having an entry in the database, this becomes very possible that you will run out of your ID, right? So here, what happened, this exact thing happened. And uh, in the past, GitHub also experienced an outage because their ID or their, uh, or their ID column hit its max limit. I already have an outage dissection of that. You can check that out on this very channel. And I would highly encourage you to do that because there I discussed how to mitigate that issue. Like if you ever come into that situation, how to fix that with two or three approaches. So go check that out if you haven't already. So here your ID is about to be exhausted. GitHub anticipated this. This is the beauty of it. Like, GitHub already had those checks in place, which could tell them, ki, hey, this table's ID range might exhaust. So do something about it. So in such situations, what uh, engineers do is they alter the table. They change the column type from int to big int. Big int is a 64-bit integer. So it gives you a massive, massive range. So that possibly would never uh, be exhausted, but it's a gigantic range, right? So GitHub already anticipated this and six months back, they already fixed it. They already ran the migration and they converted the column type from integer to big integer. So then why are we even talking about this? What, what went wrong if GitHub already was prepared for a situation like this? So this clearly shows that they had all of the necessary checks in place. They already did the migration and they were very happy that, hey, this would never happen, but it still did happen. So what, what exactly went wrong? So what went wrong is very interesting. Let's quickly go through the docu the incident report. So upon further investigation of this incident, we identified this issue was caused by check suit IDs exceeding max in 32. We had anticipated the check suit ID and check run ID would cross the limit and migrated all the database columns to begin six months back clearly shows a very good preparedness from the GitHub team in order to ensure that outage because of ID exhaustion never happens, right? And their code base mainly consists of Ruby, Go, C Sharp. It does not have any explicit type casting. That is okay. But this is where the, the root cause comes in. We failed to identify a GraphQL library we depend on that uses integer 32 when unmarshalling JSON. This, this is a blind spot. This is what led to this outage. So what happened? They prepared their database. They uh, migrated their columns from integer to big integer. They thought it's hunky dory and uh, their code bases never had an explicit check for uh, in 32, which means even a 64 integer like Ruby, Go, C Sharp, all of them supports like big integers. So that's not a like big integers, not infinite length of integers. It did support, so there is no explicit type casting. So they were happy that their backend does not need to be changed and the database was prepared. So they thought, Ki, hey, we would never have any issue with this. But <laughs> Fade had different plans. We failed to identify a GraphQL library we depend on using int32 when unmarshalling JSON. 
this this is what took down everything so i'll give you a very visual way to see ki what exactly happened so github uses some graphql library that suppose in 32 when marshaling or that expects in 32 when unmarshaling json so what is unmarshaling from json string you have to create into your uh, language specific objects for example javascript objects python dictionary or java hash map something so from json string to native dictionary objects this is what unmarshaling is all about so when some job needs to be run on a repository they create a checksuit that we just saw the creation of checksuit worked just fine because the database was already on th on uh, integer 64 or a uh, big integer so their checksuit worked just fine so creation of entry that hey this job needs to be executed it worked fine but what failed is they made an entry into the database that hey this needs to run but someone has to run it right so what typically happens in such cases is entry in the database was successful there is a service or a process that pulls this rows out of the database and puts it into a queue so that executor can execute it so while we create an entry into the database just a marker that hey i want to execute this right but someone has to take it out from the database and actually execute it. So a typical flow that happens is from DB, a process pulls it, puts it into a queue. There are multiple executors who read from this queue and then executes it job. What failed is from puller to enqueuing it into a queue. This failed because this is where the library, the GraphQL library that they were talking about comes into action. Don't know the internals of it, how it comes in, but this is where that GraphQL library comes in that it pulls or uh, whatever is pulled, or it tries to pull from the database and puts it into the queue. This service or this library or this dependency failed. And because it failed, the jobs were not getting queued into the queue for execution. So that's where what happened is because jobs failed to be queued, Check suits were left in a pending state. They were not getting completed. Like they were just waiting, 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 waiting. And this was the outage. Fine. So what did they do to fix it? They immediately pushed a code fix so as to ensure that the tasks that are queued, uh, so the tasks are queued for execution and then they are picked up by executors to finally execute. Right. So they pushed a code fix to do that. Maybe they would have upgraded the library version. Maybe they would have written a separate job that might be written in that would not have used that particular dependency, but some other dependency that supports in 64. We don't know that they have not revealed the internals of it, but there are ways to do it. The idea was to put a code fix that ensures that the tasks are queued for execution because executors didn't have any problem. They were written in Golang, Python, Ruby, C Sharp. They were working just fine. Database was working fine. The only thing that failed was puller trying to pull from the database and putting it onto the queue this this particular thing failed so mostly it was the outage of the puller that pulls it from the database and puts it into this like somehow the graphql dependency came into play over here right so then what else when actions identify the job needs to be done on a repo we first create a task uh, a check suit those individual check suits were created successfully because database could handle values greater than in 32 right database they were all prepared for database but processing those response failed due to external library we were using expecting an in 32 and that's where unmatched link failed jobs failed to be queued as a result check suits were left in the pending state we deployed a code fix to mitigate uh, after validating it something 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 right that's fine we know what they did to fix it Another impact of this was that their, uh, because their search uh, service also used this particular ID. Obviously, you pull the data out from the queue and uh, basically whenever the task is getting created, wait, let me quickly go through it. So the search service also had an impact because it was uh, returning incomplete results like the workflows or the, yeah, the workflows that had IDs greater than integer 32. They were not getting indexed in Elasticsearch. Hypothetically, let's say they are using Elasticsearch for their indexing, right? Because the job that had to put it into Elasticsearch dependent on that dependency, right? That failed, right? Because it was intended to the search service itself, like the data was not getting indexed in Elasticsearch. So someone has to 
take the data and put it into Elasticsearch. It was also the uh, responsibility of that same library that they depended on, which failed. And hence, the documents having IDs greater than integer 32's limit were not, because they were not getting unmarshaled, they were not getting pushed into Elasticsearch. So search results for that particular workflow were incomplete. So they were expect, like users might expect that these workflows should be reachable from search, but search uh, result never showed that particular workflow because the documents were not even indexed in Elasticsearch. So this was another peripheral impact of this particular outage, right? So this is this incident particularly teaches us about although we are prepared for it, we have we don't know the blind spot in the because of which they are called blind spots. They, we might have blind spot in a system which we might have overlooked and which may cause an outage like this. And what they said. This is a good thing. What we learn from this outage is to help avoid this class of failures, like not just this failure, but this class of failures, GitHub team audited and updated usage of all external libraries. So they audited every single external library that they are using and they ensure that they don't run into the same class of failures. For example, failure due to integer 32 exhaustion. They don't hit into those sort of failures again ever. Right? This exercise is something that we all should be doing because whenever we would want to use a package, we immediately do npm install this or pip install this without even going through the source code. This is what happens when you blindly trust any open source, repo any repository, not just open source, but even proprietary. You need to know on what's happening behind the scenes so that you avoid this sort of outages. Right? Pretty interesting, pretty amusing outage. I loved it because it taught us that even if you are prepared, it's if things are supposed to go wrong, it would go wrong. There are always blind spots in the system, especially when you hit a particular scale. It's hard to manage and maintain things and have 100% observability over your entire infra or your system in general. Nice. So yeah, this is all about this outage. I hope you found it amusing. I definitely did. So yeah, that's it. That's it for this video. If you guys like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys like the channel, give this channel a sub. I post three in-depth engineering videos every week. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.